To thrive in the apparel game, investors demand a stock with plenty of room to run. After years of MVP returns, Under Armour was forced to play defense. Does a strong start to the year mean markets are ready to call Under Armour a comeback kid in the making? After spending a couple of years lost in the wilderness, is Under Armour stock ready to make a comeback? Last week, the athletic apparel company reported a very strong quarter. But with the recent turbulence, the stock is really only up 24 cents versus where it was trading the day before earnings. And they were magnificent earnings to me. Now, this is Armour Day which started as a way for the company to give back to its hometown of Baltimore through now a, it's a multi-channel, multi, I'm sorry, multi-month charitable event. And it spans five cities. At the same time, they just opened a, get this, 1.3 million square foot Omni distribution house in Baltimore. It, by the way, it's an old, in an old Bethlehem Steel shipyard plant to improve their Omni-channel capabilities. Earlier today, we got a chance to check in with Under Armour founder, chairman, CEO Kevin Plank, as well as Patrick Frist, the president and COO, from their amazing refurbished facility. Take a look. Kevin and Patrick, this is a great day. It is Under Armour Day. Can you explain to me what you're doing in what looks to me like a very large facility? It's Armour Day, Jim, here in Baltimore. So we've got more than 2,000 of our local teammates, nearly 3,000 in all, that are here today. We're celebrating Armour Day. It's something we've done for the last 15 or so years where we bring all of our teammates and all the offices all over the world. That's more than 30 offices today in 75 countries. And we really celebrate our team, and that's through give back. So our teammates have given more than 80,000 hours in just the last few years, and uh, that's going to be no different today. We've got uh, nearly 20 local partners here in Baltimore where we're really impacting the local community. So we have our teammates here that are working on building bikes, uh, building puppets and toys for kids, uh, and really just getting engaged with the community and letting them know uh, what philanthropy we have available here in Baltimore City. Kevin, I remember when Sparrow's Point from Bethlehem Steel closed. A lot of people felt it brought down a whole city. It seems like what you're doing with this incredibly, this relic, is making it so it's all new and that Baltimore is back because of Under Armour's persistence. Well, we're doing our part, Jim, and that's, you're right, we're opening a brand new thing. It's called the, the Omni Distribution House, as we call it here. It's 1.3 million square feet that we have. This is our ribbon cutting. We had our governor here today, Ray Lewis, Coach John Harbaugh was here with us today, too, just celebrating the opening. And really, this team that we have, you know, this is the kind of facility that's going to give us state-of-the-art, unlike any other brand out there. Place an order online at 9 a.m. It's on a FedEx truck by 1030 on its way to your house. So it gives us capability and speed, speed, speed. 23 Broad. football fields. You can fit 23 football 23 fields inside the place. <laughs> well, I got to tell you, Patrick, I really I apologize to both of you because you know how much I want to be there. But I understand. Look, you guys set out some goals the previous quarter. You talked about brand. You talked about optimizing operations. You talked about strong relationship with the customer and sustainable uh, profit. I felt after this quarter, Patrick, you are well on the way to, you're well on the way to doing all of those. Yeah, I think we're doing great right now, Jim. And I think one of the most important things for us right now is to continue to deliver on the plan, the plan that we laid out on Investor Day. And I think you know, our strategy around uh, you know, winning with our, with our customers, making sure that we're driving this brand back to the premium position it deserves, and also making sure that we're really driving it with you know, sustainable growth, profitable growth through you know, ROIC and, and making sure that we're driving shareholder return is really important to us. And I'm sure my partner here, Kevin, would love to talk a little bit about the brand. Well, it's, it's a fact. It's always the brand, the brand, the brand. It's got to come through in everything we do. But we're thrilled over the last two and a half years of transformation that we've been running as a company is that in order for the front bend to be there and we haven't been as loud as we want to be, you're about to start hearing that from us, but it's about getting our operational house in order. And so coming off a quarter where we're able to take inventory down 24% year over year while expanding gross margin 100 bips, you know, those are the kind of metrics you look at is gross margin is a great indicator of brand health and something that we're highly focused. So nobody's declaring victory. We need to grow in North America. We're going to win, but we're glad we've been able to build this global footprint around the world that has the position to reset ourselves here in North America and think about that next, next leg of growth. What you're seeing yeah. right now, what you're seeing is really us enabling ourselves to be executing better. You know, that first quarter this year was really important to us in terms of our ability to execute on the plan. And we're feeling really, really good about, you know, our ability to do that. And when you're here today and you're feeling the power and the excitement in this Omni distribution center that's going to enable us to 
you know, supply the end consumer, our customers, our teams from one place. Uh, it's really amazing, and it also gives us great scope for growth going forward. Yep, now I want to explain to people at home the key data that I was looking at. The statistic was to see if inventory went down because that would mean that the premiumization that we want so much from you guys, in other words, brand upgrade, is happening. What I want to know, Kevin, is that with the possibility of tariffs going from 10 to 25 percent, you have been working diligently to take how much product that you source in China down. You had that 18 percent going to perhaps 7 percent by 2023. Do you need to accelerate that now, or will we all be paying more? for your great new brands. Well, I, I don't know if anybody, you know, we, we, we want to focus on the things that we can control, and that's why we've done a, a really great job with Patrick and the team in place, and we let him build on that. But our, our team being able to take us from, you know, we were up towards the 30 percent uh, of, of products made in China. Our team's done a great job, like you said, getting that down to 15 percent today, uh, less than 7 percent in the future, less than 10 percent of that actually coming to the U.S. And so it doesn't have the big impact, but of course, you know, we, we think that a free trade in the, in, the, in the global market is the best thing for everybody. Yes, and I think, you know, that fact that only 10 percent of everything that we make uh, comes from China into the U.S. Uh, gives us a really good position at this point in time. All right. So, uh, Kevin, you know, I've been a user of Under Armour ever since you first introduced me to it. I am an all Under Armour guy. Should, should I get some shoes that have a mineral infused component to them? Right. Uh, you're talking about our new Rush line that we have that just came out. Um, it's terrific. This is actually, it's a product that we introduced with Tom Brady uh, in sleepwear a few years ago. And the idea is why shouldn't athletes be getting better in everything they do? So it's actually a ceramic lined uh, material that actually uh, lines the fabric and it, 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 it turns the radiant heat that emits from your body and actually turns it back on itself to allow to increase blood flow. So you're talking about actually being able to enhance and improve yourself beyond a product that maybe gives you compression or some of the physical attributes. It actually has medicine inside of it that's FDA proven that actually enhance blood flow to help you recover faster to make you a better and stronger athlete. So it's things like that that really make the Under Armour difference, which is fits our mission statement of Under Armour makes you better. Everything we do just makes you better. All right, Patrick, how much do we care that Steph Curry goes all the way? And I, I'm not talking about Joel and B. We know from Philadelphia that was a very tough game. But when you decide to back an athlete, especially someone as, I'd say, uh, uh, as wondrous as Steph Curry, what does that mean for shoes if he goes all the way? Well, I think in general, you know, when we think about what we do, innovation is absolutely key to us. I think. As we think about the athletes that we support around the world, across all of the different sports, you know, for us, it's absolutely key, of course, that we give them, you know, product that enables them to perform. Like Kevin said before, like what we're doing right now with our hover technology and, and some of the stuff that Steph's wearing and also Joel Embiid is wearing, you know, it's enabling them to be better at their game. And ultimately, whatever we do, whatever we produce, we're there to make our athletes and people that engage with this brand better. And we're going to continue to do that with Steph. We're going to continue to do that with Joel. And that is our mission. Under Armour makes you better. So, yeah, we won we want a Sixers-Warriors final was the, was the goal we had. We wrote our brackets out. So, And not unlike the two teams in the final four for the NCAA brackets as well on the men's side and one on the yes. women's side, too. So good things well, happen. Well, athletes are winning in our brand. Kevin, you have taught me long view, long view, long view, journey, journey from 1998 when you moved to Baltimore. Now, how about going from Baltimore to India, which will have the youngest population in the world in five years? How's that? How, how did that mission go? Yeah, you know, it's been a heck of a journey for our brand. This is our 14th year as a public company. And, uh, you know, what a lot of a lot of lessons and learnings. Uh, but again, a brand that really built here in the United States is still 70 percent of what we do as a brand and company. But the ability to take Michael Phelps, Patrick, myself, uh, we got to go to India uh, in Delhi and, 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 and uh, Mumbai recently. And it was a, an incredible experience. We got to open a new brand house and we'll have 10 stores in, in that market open by the end of this year. And just starting to see and feel the brand and watching the way that we can walk in, really not as a company that was founded on a football field or just an apparel company, but walking in as a fully built athletic brand, apparel, footwear, accessories, and of course being able to speak in a market like that uh, to the sport of cricket, uh, where we're, we're actually incredibly relevant already also. So we're, we're, we're doing the right things in the right market, thinking globally and acting locally. I want people to know, Kevin, that you are a humble man, 
that when things got tough, you came to me and said things got tough, but you're always going to protect this house. I want to know how you're protecting the house now, because I think you're back because of that inventory issue. And I also just want you to describe how that's in sync with what you're doing with the comeback in Baltimore. Well, Jim, we've been pretty clear that this is a year three of a three-year transformation. Uh, so there's still, you know, we've got wood to chop and no one's declaring victory. Uh, but we're really proud of the progress of our team, where we are. You know, we are a global brand, but we've been lighting ourselves and, you know, really focus on what we can do to get the operational aspect of our house in order. And I think this is a great symbol of what that means with our team behind us celebrating, feeling good as a company, feeling good as a brand. But at the end of the day, it's going to come back to great product. And so that's our focus. And one of the great things that we've been able to build with Patrick and our team is a true go-to-market process. We've been able to implement our global operating model with four distinct regions between Asia Pacific, uh, Europe, Middle East, Africa, Latin America, here in the States. And so that's all fine and good. What the audience is looking for is tell me what it means with my 16-year-old saying, I want and I love Under Armour. That's the latest shoe. It's the latest curry. It's the latest hover, hover havoc. It's all the innovation that we're bringing to market. And now we've got a go-to-market process can deliver that on a consistent and repeatable basis. And that's what gets me really excited about. So I don't think we're there yet. I think we're certainly on the, uh, on, in the process. We're in the drive. Uh, but I love the way that our future looks, and this brand ain't going anywhere. We're going to keep fighting, and we're in the fight for sure. All right, I want to thank Kevin Plank, CEO and Chairman, and Patrick Frist, President CEO, who does so much to make this company great. And by the way, so much to make Baltimore and therefore America great. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on Mad Money. Thanks very much, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Have a great day. Have a great day. Great to see you. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.